in terms of collecting or in terms of I mean I've always read comics mm -hmm. when I was tiny I read things like Pippin and Playland that were based on things like Camberwick Green and Trumpton I mean I read all the things you would expect the, Vic the Victor, the Hotspur, the Beano, the Dandy um, in terms of co modern comics uh, Captain Britain issue 14 and that got me into Marvel Comics, which then got me into DC Comics, which then got me into indie comics, and so on and so forth. The first comics I really got into were the sort of comic book strips from the um, newspapers. And the first comic books, as in actual books that I had, were um, this one, which is Garfield, um, which my uncle gave me when I was about five. The other one was um, Bo Peep which is one of the, I think it's in the star at the time that it was written, which was actually one of my dad's books that I went and stole from him. <laughs> if you speak to Mike at Asylum, he can probably tell you that um, my order just keeps on growing from him. Um, I've got a bookcase upstairs, which I'm desperately needing another one as I'm running out of room. <laughs> my favourite book of all time is V for Vendetta. Um... I'm very fond of Captain Britain because that's my earliest experience of comics. But I mean, I'm a fan of so many characters. Um, I can say I'm one of the few people who went into the Ant-Man movie who was already an Ant-Man fan. I don't think many people can claim they were a fan of Scott Lang going into the movie, but uh, all kinds of strange things. One of my favourite comic books in terms of artwork is um, Red Hood Lost Days, which the reason why I really like it is the artist in it is Jeremy Hom. And I just, I love the way he does um, faces and the details of it. Um, he doesn't really go too in depth with backgrounds, which I take a lot from. And I just, I find all his stuff really inspirational. He's currently got a series called The Beauty, which I'm collecting, which is absolutely beautiful to look at. My first job when I was a student was working in a comic shop and it's the only job I'd ever really enjoyed other than well, I enjoyed being a scientist, but uh, the work just isn't there, so I did all kinds of dead-end jobs and eventually decided and then that was what I'd enjoyed, why don't I go back to doing that? Devolution Comics were an indie press, um, I'm the person who set up the overall um, thing. We have two publications out at the moment, um, I've been the chief artist on both of them. The Odeth I've done all the internal artwork to. Dia, I did the pencils and the colours and I had an inker on board, Alex Griffiths, to do the ink work for me. And the two covers for them have been done by two different artists. Um, with Odeth it was done by Stan Yakimov, who is in Russia. And with Dia it was done by an artist who knows herself as Bleeding Heart Works. Um, she's from Sweden. A lot of it's the things you would expect, your Batman, Superman, Spider-Man. But a lot of unusual indie things as well. Um, the Boys, for example, was a huge seller for us, to the point that we were able to get the figures from worked out. We sold, what was it, 0.3% of the world's turnover of The Boys, which is terrifying. It's sort of a mix. I mean, we do work as a team. Um, with DI, I had the most sort of artistic freedom with it because it was originally my project and um, the story was one that I came up with. Um, in terms of the actual artistic freedom within it, um, I've been lucky that the writers tend to sort of go by my recommendations on like if they've written a scene and I'm just going, it's not going to work visually, people aren't going to be able to follow it, they tend to be willing to sort of go with my vision but I'm more than aware that I might get a writer on board in the future who'll be like, no, I wrote it this way and we're sticking with it. I mean, I can see all the obvious things like um, Watchmen, V for Vendetta, Dark Knight Returns, Batman Year One, but realistically I tend to more speak to them about what they're interested in and try to match it to what they would like. Usually I'll ask them what kind of movies they like, and once you've got an idea of what they've enjoyed in terms of films, you can get an idea of something similar in comics that might interest them. Um, I'm feeling at the moment that trying to get the publications out, because I this unfortunately isn't my full-time job yet, I mean hopefully one day, fingers crossed, but um, I feel that there's a lot of like, you really have to um, sort of enjoy what you're doing otherwise it's kind of a case of it's going to become a real chore because I come in in the evening and the first thing I do is sit down at the computer 
um, we have a lot of people online sort of contacting us saying, oh, when's the next Odetta? When's the next day out? And I'm kind of going, well, I'm one person, so I'm really, you know, struggling to get through it, but we're getting there. <laughs> I'm actually working on issue 2 of ODEF currently. We've just had the script from Dia signed off, so that one will be, as soon as this one's finished, straight on to that one. And also I'm working on, I'm actually writing one at the moment called Into Wonderland. So it's a bit of a surreal um, Alice in Wonderland, a very adult, I'll say, um, take on Alice in Wonderland. Um, basically very drug fueled and very comical at the same time. It's not, you know, doom and gloom. Realistically, it's seeing the look in somebody's face when you find that thing that they've been looking for for years and years that I'm able to track down. One of my customers, for example, is a big Daredevil collector and we're now nine issues away from him having absolutely everything. Basically, just seeing the final product there and getting my ideas on paper and, I mean, um, it is a lot of work and at times you think, I have no life, why am I doing this? Then you get them through in print and you're like, yeah, this was why it was worth it. Online we've got both internet, I mean the website's our main thing. I've got a couple of the guys who do maintain Twitter and Facebook for me, but I mean we do ads when we've got signings and we promote those through different things. We've got a feature this weekend on comic book resources, we have their featured store, so we do that kind of thing. A couple of hundred, plus or minus 20 to 30 in either direction on any given day. I've got mixed feelings about it. I'd say Marvel's doing quite well. At the same time, they're not sticking completely to the comic books as written, but I don't feel they would work on screen if they did. Um, with DC, their animations are fantastic, but the actual films I feel always feel a bit let down with. I think it's become very trendy to think so. Um, I don't think so at all. I mean, if I just concentrate on the Marvel franchise for a moment, you could say, oh, too many superheroes, but then there was Guardians of the Galaxy, that was space opera. Ant-Man, whilst technically a superhero, is more it's more of a cape, a heist movie. Um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s all about spies, so, you know, it's very diverse. How can you say it's grown oversaturated? And frankly, it's still making the box office, so clearly there's still a demand. I'm not sure about attracting new readers because they, I tend to find they're not publicised enough. Um, but those who were within the comic book community, it's absolutely fantastic. I mean, there's titles out there that I've kind of went, oh, I'm not sure about that. And they've appeared on free comic book day, picked them up and I've been hooked since. The word free does, but it's a bit of a strange one. Um, firstly, people won't believe that you want to give them something for nothing. And then, I mean, later in the year, there's Halloween Comic Fest. It's exactly the same event. But nobody comes, because it doesn't say free in the title. Well, I mean, we support both. We do signings any time they want us to. Whenever they've got a new product, we're keen to push it. As long as something's good for comics in Aberdeen, we want to be behind it. And I think it's got, it's a, definitely a growing community. I mean, I do go to a creative group um, called Asylum Creatives, at Asylum Comic Store. And I think the indie comic stores in Aberdeen, Asylum Plan I in particular, are absolutely fantastic to deal with.
haven't been in them, so I really don't have an axe to grind in either direction. I mean, customers tell me all kinds of horror stories, but that's pretty much what customers think I want to hear, and I'm sure that they tell the same horror stories about me to the other two, so what do you want me to say? I try to visit them all, I'll be honest, but I do have my standing order with Asylum, and Mike is kind of, you know, they're pushing our stuff constantly, so I would say I'm slightly towards Asylum. I wasn't at the Granite City Comic Con. Um, I loved the fact that it happened, but because it was a job that needed two of us to do, I took the crappy end of it. I figured it's only fair that John got the fun end. So he got to stand and schmooze with people at the con, and I got everybody that was here. Um, it was great for us. Um, I'm glad it brought people in the, in the city, and I hope it continues. I think Granite City Comic Con, it's up and coming, and it's getting there. Last year they did have a few issues with the queues and um, such and um, we were actually on asylum's table at the time but I think hopefully if they've ticketed it and it all goes smoothly um, this coming year will be good unfortunately we won't be there ourselves but um, hopefully it will be good and I mean the other comic conventions we've been to um, around the country have been fantastic and um, we were at Sheffield and Glasgow recently and I have to give a shout out to um, Inveruri um, Comic Con it was absolutely fantastic Ooh, it's a tough question. Um, I'm not actually sure because um, with the comic books, um, like obviously Dia is one I've created and I kind of got very into her character, but um, I think in terms probably gender bending a bit, but I'd say Red Hood Jason Todd because I just love the fact he's sarcastic and he gets away with murder, literally. Oh, that's an easy one. <laughs> Multiple man. Okay. Good. Thought that I could be in three places at one time doing three different things? Hell yeah.